We're moving right along. So normal skydiving, expect just to have fun. And suddenly going up on a practice jump, right after takeoff, we lose the engine. The pilot says, oh my God. And he hits me, he says, that's it, we're going down. The airplane loses our lift, which is the aerodynamic power that makes an airplane fly, lift. But it just drops straight down. I'm sure the view out the windshield, or the, we're all going to be dead. We hit a tree going about 100 miles an hour. I was sitting on the floor next to the pilot. My face stopped my body going about 100 miles an hour. We cartwheeled several times, and the plane was then wedged in the ground. Now, that's damaged more after the fire and all that, but you can see it was, it tore that right side, the wing back. And, and these kind of airplanes, the six passenger Piper Cherokee, the fuel is held in rubber bladders, two on the right wing and two on the left wing. We emptied the left wing out so the plane would be a little lighter. <clears throat> but the right side t t tore open, and then as the skydivers were getting out, my partner was the last one getting out. And uh, just as he was a few feet away, the plane exploded. And uh, he heard screaming. I was trapped inside, so was the pilot. I was soaked with fuel on fire from head to toe. So this brave man, my partner, went back in the burning airplane, grabbed me by the parachute harness, ripped them loose, rolled me on the ground, and I ran away. And the only thing I remember, the first thing I remember after the accident, I don't remember the actual crash. I don't remember the fire being on fire, but I remember being in that ambulance and the sound of that siren, that whining sound. And so for the first time in my life, a person who was living to be self-sufficient, a person who was exercising my talents and ability to gain strength and influence in the world that I lived in, was for the first time I called out to a God I didn't know and to a Lord I never served. I said, help, help. The burns are bad. Brain injury is bad. And they expect me to die of shock, but I didn't the first night and the next day. But as things progressed, I got really sick. Massive weight loss. Infection, supposed to go back up here. Infection throughout my body. Sometimes bleeding 10 pints of blood a day. For real. They tried everything they could, then they brought in a specialist. I lost you know, from 170 some pounds down to 92 or 93 pounds. Because the evaporation process burns up seven. Six to seven thousand calories for every liter of water. The kind of burns that I had, the doctor told me I would burn six or seven liters a day. So over 40,000 calories being burned up and none going in. Blood loss, infection, sepsis, organ failure, all of that happening at once. They finally did everything they could. They brought a specialist in from Case Western Reserve, a famous teaching hospital. He examined me and wrote in his notes at the end, there's simply nothing I can offer this young man. Basically, he was saying medically, physically, He's hopeless, but God. As I was laying in that condition, and on the particular day that I can remember, I was in a coma. Sometimes I was in a coma, sometimes I was blurry, and sometimes I was so alert, I was hyper alert, and the pain is not treatable with any kind of drug. It doesn't help, the pain is so bad. I was laying there in a coma. You, I couldn't see, I couldn't hear, you could stick a knife in me, I wouldn't feel it, but I saw the doctor with a clipboard on this side of my bed, Talking to a nurse on the side, he said, when this patient, Mr. Robinson, dies, I want you to clean this entire area out and move that patient, Pat Clark, over here. I was unconscious, in a coma, but I could hear, I could tell you what he was wearing, and I could tell you what that woman looked like. If you talk to somebody in a hospital and they're in a coma, speak to their spirit. They may hear you, they may even see you, and they can respond whether they wake up or not. Amen. Wow. Amen. I remember thinking, no, 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 no. The next day, I... I got worse with a fever, and I couldn't breathe. They had me tipped up like this, and all of a sudden, out of my body, my spirit came out of my body. I never heard anything like this, never read anything like this, never thought of anything like that. Instantly, I'm in a spiritual dimension. It's shocking to be conscious like that, detached from the physical plane. It's more real than this. The colors of everything are more colorful. Everything is like razor sharp. The emotions are stronger. And the biggest shock was the total comprehension and understanding of eternity. You just know that you know that I am a spirit man. I have a soul and I live in a body. But the body wasn't even, I wasn't even, you couldn't even think. Whatever happened? Why is this? It's like you are so shocked by the spiritual revelation of what the spirit world is like. And everything was just sharp and bright and, and amazing. And I had no control of what was going on. Logic and reasoning. You don't argue. You just know that you know that all of this is real. 
And something in the distance was a, like a right, white, bright white circle. It was like a, it was like poor. I know it now to be an opening or a portal. And I was gliding like this through this dimension. And I was almost there, and I could feel something on my right side. And I looked at it, and I looked in to an abyss of blackness. Instantly, multiple revelations came into me. It's eternal. It's empty. It's for, it is forever. It's totally being cut off from the source of all life. If a being goes in there, you will be super conscious forever. You will know that you will never experience anything, you never see anybody, you never taste anything, nothing will ever change for it. You'll be cut off forever from the source of all life. That is terrifying and hopeless, and that is the utter darkness. It's not some fairy tale mystical thing. It's a real thing in a real place that I not only could see, I could feel what it would be like. That is awful. So as it was closing, it was eclipsing this white light. And I'm on the very precipice of eternity, the very edge of eternity. And I cried out, no, I'm sorry, I want to live. And I said, I want to be alive. Somehow I was thrust through this opening and I was standing in heaven, in the third heaven, in the presence of Almighty God. And I knew instantly I would never die forever. Amen. I would never die forever. And this presence of God that was somewhere here off to my left, there's three outstanding things that I want. One of them I talked about is eternity. The second thing, which is hard to comprehend, my consciousness was as if I had never, ever done anything wrong or experienced anything bad. How can that be? He washes us white as snow. God not only forgives your sin, he forgets it. You can't comprehend that here because we remember everything sometimes too much but it's like and the third thing which is the most profound all of it is profound is the undiluted perfect love of God this is amazing it doesn't come through the filter of works it doesn't come through the through the gifts of the spirit this is God himself loving you as his own son or daughter it's outrageous and then I, what I see, well, what was it like? What did you say? I didn't see any people. I didn't see any fat babies with diapers playing harps or guitar. I didn't see St. Peter checking IDs at the gate. None of that. But everything was, what was it like? What, you see, I, what, the substance of what was ever there was like crystalline glass that you could see through. But every kind of color was in. Even colors you didn't even know exist. You could see through everything and feel everything. And, and, and this, this river was going through me. It, it looked like little gold split. Uh, pieces of gold flecks going between my waist and my, my, where my knees would be was going right through me. It's the river of life and everything that river touches is more alive than anything we know about being alive. It's totally alive, totally clean, totally energy. It's an extension of God's glory from his throne. And everything that you see or know about or feel, all of it is alive. This glass stuff, this crystal is alive and all, everything is worshiping God. It's amazing. <laughs> So if you don't like worship and music and lights, don't go to heaven. Because <laughs> it's, it's got it going. And I, I just realized something this last year. I saw the minimal of heaven. I didn't see anything for my rewards or anything I'm going to get or anything. Because I, if I was anything, I was repentant for a couple of weeks. You say, how can it be? Because anybody who calls on the Lord in repentance shall be saved. But I've been walking with the Lord for 53 years. I think I'm going to see some different things. It doesn't matter. What I saw is already mind-blowing. It's already so amazing. But uh, then the, I saw about six and a quarter, uh, a year, six and a quarter years of future history every day, every moment. I saw Barbara five years before we met. I saw this farm we were going to buy in Ohio, and I could see. I saw myself on this rusty gate, and I could smell these lilac bushes that were going to be there. And I turned around and saw this blonde, and I just felt peace. It was her. Six years before that happened. I, how could I smell? I didn't even have a nose. But I mean, this really happened. Before, and I saw, I saw some weird things on the earth, and some things the Lord drew me into the matrix of, of the vision because I was doing things in it, and I was experiencing things in it. And then when I saw the last thing, it dissipated. I was in the presence of God, and God spoke to me, not in words that are understood or heard, the spirit, his spiritual words came into me that I was going back to the earth. I promise you, I did not want to come back here. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, but basically, did not God answer my prayer? 
I want to give me another chance. I want to be alive. Yeah, he sent me back here and in the same way that I had left, I came back from the third heaven through the second heaven. I could feel my spirit going through the roof of the hospital and my spirit sinking into my body. If you could imagine, if you could feel like wind and going through a big bushy tree or something, and then all of a sudden, my eye opened that I could see out of my ears. I'm laying flat on this bed, and the person who had all these manifestations of death, God began to turn death backwards. Amen. And I woke up, I'm looking at the ceiling, and out of my mouth is this beautiful language that I ever heard about, and I was worshiping God in the Spirit. I didn't know what that was, never heard of it. All of a sudden, I thought about it, and I was beside myself, and it stopped. And around me, there was, you know, like, five or six doctors and nurses looking at me, and I, could, I knew it could feel and discern everything about them. These people were terrified. What they saw to them was very scary. And what I had was this explosive, never-before-experienced love. I felt bad because they felt bad. I'm like, oh, don't feel bad. Everything's going to be okay. Nothing was okay. <laughs> Nothing had changed. Nothing had changed physically. I'm still fatal. I'm still blind. My legs are paralyzed. I got no hope. Uh, I got so many things wrong with me. They say nothing can be made right. I had seven fatal complications. But what I had was this explosive love. What I saw in heaven was now inside me. That river I saw was now inside me. I didn't have it up here, but I had it to where it really counts. Right in here. And I was like, it's so different. I didn't know what it was. All I know is that was then, and this is now. I was blind for five and a half years. Barbara and I were together for, what, a year and a half? The doctors not understand. He opened my, my, when he my, worked on my eye, he determined my eye was dead, bandaged it up for seven days. I laid flat in the hospital, fasted just water for seven days, blocked the light out of the room, took the bandage off, and I said, oh, my God, I can see. Like, what, shadows? I can see everything, two of everything. My, I looked like that comedian, Marty Feldman. One was going that way, one I was going... And he didn't know what to say. It's a miracle. This was a pioneer in eye surgery.